Hello and welcome to Tech Deals graphics card performance comparison. Today we are testing four different graphics cards. The RX 570 4GB card against the GTX 1060 3GB card. The RX 580 8GB card against the GTX 1060 6GB card. Now these cards range in price from about $170 to about $250 when I'm filming this in 2017. There will be links in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg for all four sets of graphics cards. By all means, compare prices and buy it where it makes the most sense to you. All four cards were installed in the same computer. It's my $1,500 i7 7700K build running at a fixed 4.7 gigahertz on all four cores. Link to that build video in the video description below. Fraps was used for the frame performance numbers you will see at the end of this video, but it was not used to capture any of this video. Instead, an external Elgato HD60S hardware capture card was used plugged into a separate computer. So there is no performance loss for having captured this video. You are watching the actual video that the performance numbers at the end of the video is used for. Finally, the numbers in green at the top left corner of the screen are from MSI Afterburner, a free program you can download and use to monitor your system's performance in real time while playing games. This is a very handy tool to figure out what is the limitation to your system's performance. Is it your CPU, your RAM, your graphics card? I use this all the time. And if you want to find out what the bottleneck or limit in your system is, I recommend you do so as well. We are testing three different games today, Mankind Divided, Far Cry Primal, and Rainbow Six Siege. I'm using the built-in benchmarks of all three games, and I've put them into a single video because, quite frankly, none of these are long enough to really justify making a separate video. They'd be extremely short. This will be short enough as it is, at least as far as tech deals goes. Now, I know some people like to upload five or six minute videos, but I prefer to create longer quality content that gives me a chance to talk in detail about everything that you see, and frankly, it takes a 20 minute video to go into depth. I assume you haven't seen my other videos. Now, if you have, some of this will be repeated. There will be links in the video description below to the other tests on these four graphics cards using live gameplay in games such as Grand Theft Auto V, The Division, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Battlefield 1, and others. And those will be actual gameplay, not built-in benchmarks. This is These are three games that I don't personally play. And if I tried to do gameplay videos, frankly, they would be terrible. And so I'm just using the built-in benchmarks to give you some comparative idea of how well these uh, three games will perform on these three cards. Now, if you own these games and you own older cards, then of course you can run the built-in benchmark on your machine and compare it to the performance that you see here. Now, having said that, we're almost through the second card on Mankind Divided. This is the GTX 1063 gig card. The RX 570 was first, and that was shown during the initial explanation of what the video was and what we were testing. If after watching each of these you want to see it, of course, go back and watch the real-time numbers. Now, the reason these videos are not just slides of charts is, first of all, A, you don't come to YouTube to see charts. You could go to web pages to see charts. Frankly, sites like Anatech.com do an awesome job of reviewing charts. Uh, Tech Power Up, Gamers Nexus, other websites also do an excellent job of showing charts and showing performance graphs out the wazoo. You come to YouTube, in my opinion, to see actual game video, which is why I actually put the video in here. Even though this is just the built-in benchmarks, you can see the frame rate, the RAM usage, the CPU usage, the temperature, the core clocks in real time, and that gives you information that just looking at a chart does not necessarily provide. Now here we are on the RX 588 gigabyte card. This is an awesome card, a gigabyte Aurorus factory overclocked card. This has the big fans, the RGB lighting. It's the two and a half wide slot card, factory overclocked to 1425 megahertz, which for an RX 580 is really good. The RX 570 shown here and the RX 580 are basically bookends to the market. What I'm showing you is the slowest RX 570 sold and the fastest RX 580 sold. These are two very different price points. These cards are about $100 apart. But this RX 580, as I said, is factory overclocked and really quick, whereas the RX 570 is a single fan, small, petite, 
mini ITX card designed for installing in very small systems. Now the GTX 1060s are both factory overclock cards. The 3GB card is an MSI Gaming X and the 6GB card is the EVGA for the win. I previously covered the for the win card in my 2017 updated which GTX 1060 should you buy and in that one I basically said the for the win was unnecessary. Buy the super clocked, the performance is the same within one frame per second of each other. There is no, statistically they are tied. However, when I made that video, the For the Win card was a good $30 to $40 more expensive than the Superclock card. That's changed. It's now about $15 more expensive than the Superclock card. What do you get for the For the Win? It's not really performance, although possibly you can overclock it a bit more. The real thing you get is less noise, cooler running temps, depending upon your fan speeds. The fan here is turning right at under 1000 RPM at 32%. The super clocked will be turning closer to 1500 RPM because it has one fan. So the reason to spend an extra oh, $15 for the for the win is because you want the longer card, the better heat sink, the better fans. I didn't think it was worth 30 to 40, but now that the price has come down, at least in April of 2017 when I'm filming it, I think it's a much better value proposition. I'm also including it because I've covered the Super Clocked in 20 plus different videos and I've never done one of these game performance videos for the, for the win, so here we are. Now this is the last run on Mankind Divided. Now I'm going to show you Far Cry Primal and these benchmarks run really quick. Here is the RX 570 on Far Cry Primal. Now, if you look at the clock speed up on the top, there's a little bit difference here. Do you see the 1300 megahertz? This is not the single fan mini ITX card. I swapped out and did a couple of tests using the ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix factory overclocked card. This is running at 1300 megahertz. Well, pretty close to it. Look at those fan speeds. They're really spinning. To get an RX 570 to 1300 megahertz on these small cards requires a higher fan speed in order to keep the temperature reasonable. And even then it's not quite holding the 1300 megahertz all that well. My advice, either buy one of the cheapest RX 570s you can find. I do recommend a two fan card if you can get one. But if you're going to spend more, if you're going to buy a factory overclocked high-end 570, just buy a 580. That RX 570 ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix card is $190 at the end of April 2017. $10 more buys you an RX 580 4 gig card. And I assure you, even a base RX 580 is faster. 1340 megahertz clock speed plus... um almost 300 more shaders and faster VRAM. 2000 megahertz on the VRAM versus 1750. Now here you can see the MSI Gaming X, it's running at over 1900 megahertz. The, the beautiful thing about the GTX 10 series is they all come with GPU Boost 3.0. They factory overclock themselves. So this Gaming X does not come at 1936 megahertz out of the box. It's boosting itself to that. You can actually uh, tune that card up in another 65 megahertz or so and make it run at 2 gigahertz. I am running all these cards at out-of-the-box speeds. Why? Because I believe that most people do that. They buy the card, they put it in their machine, they install the drivers, and they use it. You can absolutely download MSI Afterburner. It works on all these cards. It does not have to be an MSI card. And you can manually overclock all of these cards. But I think the percentage of the population who manually overclocks their graphics card is in the very low single digits. And so I test, uh, when it comes to graphics cards, stock configurations. I know I overclock CPUs, but that's a bit of a different market. For graphics cards, I just do stock. Now, this RX 580 will run at 1500 megahertz, but you have to turn the fans up to 60% and the card is no longer silent when you do so. 75 additional megahertz of clock speed to have to add 20% to the fans, in my opinion, is simply not worth it. You add a frame or two to the performance. It's completely unnoticeable. That card, I would frankly leave it stock. Now, this for the win card is incredible. Look at the fan speed. I am very impressed by this card. 500, 600 RPM, 2000 megahertz out of the box speed. 
I really love EVGA products. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, if you watched my videos last year when the 10 series first came out, you know I am a big EVGA fan. Most of my personal machines have EVGA cards in them. They do a really good job and I've, I've been very, very happy with their cards. That being said, um, I'm going to have an upcoming review on two different 1080 Ti's and neither one of them are EVGA cards. Why? Well, because it's time to review something different. I'm going to have an ASUS card and a Gigabyte card and that'll be interesting to take a look at something new for a change because I don't want to become the all EVGA channel. I mean, there's different preferences. People like different cards, different colors. I understand that. Now, here we are in Rainbow Six Siege on the built-in benchmark. The RX 570 here, the fan's turning about 1500 RPM, and you'll see the clock speed is actually underclocked a bit. The base clock speed here should be 1240 megahertz, and it's actually running at about 1150. If you turn the fan up a little bit, you will get that up to 1240 without a problem, but then the card is not silent anymore. That, as I said, that is the mini ITX card. In Far Cry Primal, it was the ASUS Republic of Gamer Strix. I actually tested three games first on that before I switched out for the uh, single fan card. That's why there's a different card there. In any case, now we're on to the GTX 1063 gigs. And this is why I'm putting three games in this video. All the other videos for this comparison series, again, the full playlist in the description below for all the other games. Between the analysis at the end, the introduction at the beginning, these videos would be unnecessarily long if I just did one game, especially Far Cry Primal. To, to make those little four runs into a video seems kind of wasteful. I'm trying to sort of condense them down and make the beginning and the ending explanation the same to basically respect your time so you're not having to listen to the same thing too many times. Now, why don't I put three games into every video? Because then every video would be an hour plus long, and I find that people don't watch hour-long videos that much. Even my 30-minute videos don't get watched as much as I would like. I think a lot of people skip to the end for the charts without understanding that watching the gameplay is why you come to YouTube. If you want charts, you don't need YouTube for that. That's what web pages are for. So I have not been calling out individual numbers on the MSI Afterburner throughout this entire run. These come too fast. There's a total of 12 different tests here between the four cards and the three games and trying to point out specific items from MSI Afterburner's numbers would just, I would end up talking over myself as we go from game to game. Instead, if any of these interest you or you want to see the specific cards, well, here's the video. You can watch it and rewatch it and rewind and fast forward. Now, the timestamps to keep them manageable, I'll put the games and the result screens in the timestamps in the video description below. I'm not going to put all 12 runs in there because uh, that might be too much. But uh, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comment section. But I'll put the I'll put the three games and I'll put the results in the timestamps if you want to easily click through the video and find the game that you're interested in seeing benchmarked. All I'll say is that all of these cards were basically GPU limited. We're not CPU limited. We do have a very nice fact, uh, overclocked i7 running at 4.7 gigahertz fixed. So we are actually seeing the graphics card performance of each of these cards, not the CPU. And here we are at the first result, Mankind Divided 1080p high detail. The green bars are the average frame rate. The red bars are 1% minimum, and the blue bars are the 0.1% minimum. I'll explain those in a second. First of all, the green bars average frame rate. All but the 570 averaged over 60 frames per second, although frankly, except for the RX 580, they were pretty close to 60 frames per second. Now, this is the built-in benchmark and not the game. I have not played Deuce Ex Mankind Divided enough to tell you whether or not the game will be this playable. This is meant to be a comparative result, to see relative performance between the cards, not to tell you whether or not the game is eminently playable throughout the entire game at this setting on these cards. It's a comparison, not a game test. So basically the RX 580 in the benchmark is the fastest card with the GTX 1060 6 gig following behind. I've tested 17 different games, 13 of which are actual gameplay. Only four of these are going to be the built-in benchmark. I've tested 17 games. About half the RX cards win. About half the GTX cards win. Frankly, 
Whenever somebody says, well, which one should I buy? It honestly doesn't matter. The difference between 71 frames per second and 66 frames per second is pretty minor. That's five frames a second. Unless you are doing comparison side by side, unless you own both, you'll never notice or care about the difference. Now, let me talk about the 1% and the 0.1% numbers. Short version. The 1% minimums mean that 1% of the time the frame rate is below that number and 99% of the time the frame rate's above that number. Think of it as a minimum, but think of it as an improved better minimum. The problem with straight minimums is that a minimum means one frame in the entire run touches that number. And it's not necessary. If you play 10 minutes and one frame is low and everything else is fine, that's not reflective of performance. The 1% or the red bars are the ones I think you need to look at. 99% of the time, your frame rate will be the red bar or better. Now, the 0.1% means 99.9% .9 of the time. The reason the numbers are so close here is because these are such short runs. Watch my longer 30-minute gameplay videos. You will see a larger spread between the 0.1% and the 1% minimums. The reality is that this game at high detail is pretty similar on all four of these cards. Clearly spend more, get more, but game performance is pretty consistent across these cards by the one you prefer. Now on to Far Cry Primal. Same story, the two less expensive cards are very similar in performance, and the two more expensive cards are very similar in performance. But again, this is an incredibly short built-in benchmark run, and I highly doubt it's reflective of all the gameplay built into the game. All this means is that at least in this comparative test, the RX 570 and GTX 1060 3 gig are very similar, and the 8 gig and 6 gig versions of the 5 80 and the 1060 are also extremely similar in performance. There's probably very little real difference between the cards. Again, buy the one that costs the least and that comes from the company that you prefer to buy from. And this takes us to Rainbow Six Siege, probably by far the most popular game in this test. Very high detail, look at the incredible performance. The green bars, the average is over 130 frames per second, even on the RX 570. This game plays fine at 1080p. In fact, I honestly thought about going back and retesting at 1440p because I think these cards, especially the two better cards, would play this game at 1440p without complaint. I know this is a very competitive online game. It's very popular on Twitch. So what this means is that if you've got a 144 hertz monitor, each of these cards, especially the two better cards, the eight and the six gig card, will basically hold an average of about 144 or better frames per second on a high-end 1080p monitor. Now, the minimums are not going to be there. The 1% minimums are 113 and 102, respectively. If you want those better, well, there's the GTX 1070 if you want to throw more money at the issue. Still, with an average performance right around the refresh rate of 144 hertz monitors, any of these cards are going to be just fine for most people. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge button directly below the video. Post your comments below the video and as always, check out the video description. Links to Amazon and Newegg for all of these graphics cards will be down in the description below. If you found this video helpful, interesting, and useful, if you find all of my videos helpful and useful, please use those links when you shop. Finally, the link to my Patreon account will be down there if you like my channel in general and you want to see more videos. If you want me to stay independent, please consider supporting me. Every dollar that comes to me through Patreon will go simply right back into the channel to buy cards and computers and things to review and to help so that I can stay independent and keep providing you with these awesome, wonderful reviews that you all seem to love so much. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.